Walk us through the significance. There's three of them. <laughs> but, but, but Karen's really young, but she's like a, definitely a force to be reckoned with. It's an interesting time for Bridgewater, as you say. Ray Dalio had only stepped down a couple of months ago. He was one of the co-CIOs as well. So Bridgewater is pretty used to having a crowded room. They have two co-CEOs, three co-CIOs. But again, it is the world's largest hedge fund firm. Now, if you kind of look at it, there's a lot of consistency here. She's been there since college, yeah. right out of Princeton. She was recruited there by Greg Jensen, one of the co-CIOs. I've seen in another interview that Rob Prince had done about her that he's even said that he could take her spot, his spot one day. And so... Is that what's happening is here? Close. Is that... Is, is is this it management change? Is this mm -hmm. kind of just a long-term management strategy? Get her in. Bob's figuring out what the exit looks like. It looks like Karen. And, and remember, we've been talking about these thick ranks that they have. You have Nir Bardea just a couple months ago has told Bloomberg that this transition is a must-win battle. And so you're seeing, seeing Bridgewater do what you're not seeing many companies do across Wall Street, which is not even just set your level one. It's setting all of the levels of leadership into a nice thick stack so that there is consistent succession and leadership here. Uh, it's interesting to see her come out of the research division here mm -hmm. and then really emphasize research as a key area of, you know, what guides the firm moving forward. Nir Bardea, one of the co-CEOs, also named last year, has only been in that role since the beginning of last year, also has come from that world. And so you're really seeing research lead the ship here at Bridgewater. Also, wasn't she doing a lot of ESG work for them and analysis, too? I think that's quite interesting. It is interesting. And I would point that ESG is interesting not only from the energy perspective here. I've had Greg Jensen previously tell me that they're thinking about geopolitics a lot and the way that yep. they think yep. about how strategy works at Bridgewater moving forward, how their investment committee thinks about how to navigate these markets. This was a role that really uh, got a lot of its work done at a time where the war in Ukraine really shifted the conversation about global energy. And so she had a key role there. She was recently in Davos speaking about a lot of this as well. But to be very clear, her, her role is much broader here yep. than, than ESG. It, it always has been, to be honest. I, she, we've talked to I'm a huge fan. Yeah, you talk too. to her all the time. She's so smart, but she talks about just about, about everything. Yeah. What does this tell us about culture at Bridgewater? Because she has been there for so long, I think that that is an important part of this. Is there a drastic shift in her being there in this role? No, because she's been there for a yep. long time. I think, you know, I want to point out, this is not a story about ESG or sustainability or diversity and inclusion. She's been there since, you know, pre-2008. But she is the first woman to yep. lead a, 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 this, a spot like this at the world's largest hedge fund. So culturally, of course, it's a shift. This is a notoriously male-dominated industry. And so it kind of speaks measures for the asset management community, let alone the world's largest hedge fund.